trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life Aloha, everybody. I am back for part two in Be Strong. And thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing. If you're not yet a subscriber, share our videos, share our website, konafacecenter.org. And I thank you for being here again. And I'm going to continue in this that we need to be strong when we face any kind of circumstance, when we face grief, when we face accidents, when we face anything, even those little minor things. So if you didn't listen to part one, please go back because this is following or continuing with part one. I'm going to start today in Matthew 9, 22. It says, but Jesus turning and seeing her said, daughter, take courage. Your faith has made you well. At once, the woman was made well. We need to take courage. We need to be courageous, courageous if we're going to be strong because we have this faith that can show us and it is proven before and it'll prove to us again that he takes care of everything. That if we seek him to be made well, we will be made well. So we be encouraged instead of discouraged. Matthew 14 and 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. We need to take courage in all things, Jesus, all things. Let's look at Joshua chapter one and verse six to nine. I've been reading from the New American Standard Bible so far. It says in Joshua one, six, be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Now think about this for a moment. Moses has died. Joshua is leading the people. And there are many, many, many people that are going into this land. But God said, be courageous, Joshua. Don't be in fear. I'm going to take them. But you're going to be leading them. I have placed you in that position because you can count on me. So look at verse 7. It says, only be strong and very courageous. See, we have to be strong and courageous in the things of God. We can't be little wimpies. We're not babies. We may be new Christians, but we need to learn how to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. What? Are we supposed to go back to the Old Testament? It's covered in the New Testament. Love God with all your being. Love your neighbor as Jesus has loved you. That covers all 10 of the commandments and all of that. The precepts, the guidelines, all of that stuff. So don't worry about it. Okay, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. I'm going to stop here and tell you we sing this in song, in praise to God. And you should turn on if you have never listen to our praise and worship and our messages on Sunday and Wednesday. You should turn it on. You'll also see hula because our sisters and brothers that dance hula love to honor the Lord and worship and dance. And it's all Christian and it's all about him. But I am telling you, when we sing this, I just, I just feel like running around the church and it's happened before. I just get so excited. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. Doing what God wants us to do and being encouraged in it brings success. Who here doesn't want to be successful? I don't believe you. All right. If you said you don't. All right, we're on verse 8 in Joshua chapter 1. 
it says again, this book shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. And finally, in verse nine, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. This is what God is commanding Joshua. This is what he's commanding of his people. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We sing wherever you may go. I'm going to go to the third one because we are encouraged in the Lord. We can encourage others to do the same. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13. But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction and that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. Don't grumble over your leaders. Don't grumble over your ministers. Don't do it. If there's an issue that is vitally important, that take it to God first and listen to what he says to do. Don't take it to other people. Don't grumble. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 We ask you, brothers and sisters, to warn those who do not work. It's a sin not to work. God has given us the ability. Who are we to be lazy? You know, come on, people. If you can, there's some people that physically cannot. But there's things that you can do for the kingdom of God anyway. And one of them is being courageous and strong in your faith. Okay, I'm continuing in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 14. Encourage the people who are afraid. Help those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. We can't yell at people for doing this, people. We need to encourage them and encourage them with the word. Encourage them with the word. No bragging with the word. Because a lot of people say, well, you can do this. You can be strong, blah, 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 blah. We haven't always been that way. As we've walked with the Lord, we've gotten that way. Isaiah 41, 13. For I am the Lord your God who upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear. I will help you. doesn't get much clearer than that. Let's look at Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I think we read that but it's good to hear it again. Isaiah 35 3 to 4. Encourage the exhausted, strengthen the feeble. Now, this is important because sometimes our friends, uh, fellow church people, whatever, family members are going through something and they may just be utterly exhausted, utterly um, concerned about what's going on. We need to encourage them. Say to those with anxious heart, take courage, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. We need to encourage others so that their fear is diffused and dispersed. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the good news. Don't, don't gossip. Don't give bad news. Don't talk, you know, don't even watch the news over and over and over again that's on TV, all the fake news, even if there be a little bit of truth in it. And even in the Christian news, they still go over and over and over it again. And we need to focus on the word of God more than what's going on. We need to know what's going on. We need to know how to pray, but we need to stay encouraged. And if you're getting discouraged, then fast from watching. Second Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the good news. Be ready at all times and tell people what they need to do. Sometimes people just need a direction. Not be bossy, but just direct them. Tell them when they are wrong. Encourage them with great patience and careful teaching. This is so vital, people. When we know how to encourage ourselves to be strong, we need to encourage through the word with patience. We can't be anxious. We can't be angry. We can't be flustered. Jesus isn't with us. What right do we have to be with others that are growing up in their faith? Okay, Hebrews 3 and 13. But encourage each other every day while it is today. And you know what? If tomorrow exists, it will be today tomorrow. It's just how it is. Every day is a today day. Help each other 
So none of you will become hardened because sin has tricked you. We need to encourage people to stay away from sin. It's not okay. It's not okay. We read a chapter in the Bible today that one person came and talked another person into doing something that was sinful. Why listen to non-believers? Why listen to evil people? There's no reason. Listen to believers, even if it hurts you, even if your feelings are hurt because you feel like, well, they're just telling me, you know, this and that from the word. Yeah, that's the best thing for you to hear. We encourage others always to flee from sin, and we encourage ourselves to do the same. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. I've been reading the last few scriptures from the NCV and this one also. Let us think about each other and help each other to show love and do good deeds. You know, maybe you don't feel like doing something, but there's a new people in your church or there's a new neighbor. Don't be lazy. Show them how to do it and how to do it with love and respect and correctly. Verse 25, you should not stay away from the church meetings as, as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as you see the day coming. What day? The return of Jesus, the end of the world as we know it. We can come we can encourage others to come to church where we can encourage one another while we're at church. It's so important. Last scripture of the day, 1 Chronicles 28 and 20. Then David said to his son Solomon, be strong and courageous and act. See, that strength and courage should make you act so you're not just frozen and can't move like an ice cube. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord God my God is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. I'm going to review our three points and then we shall be done till next week. Number one, we can strengthen or encourage ourselves in the Lord during difficult times because of who God is and what his word says. Because his word is the truth. It's the power him and the Holy Spirit, the Word and the Holy Spirit, because He is the Word. Number two, encourage ourselves in the Lord. Encouraging ourselves in the Lord produces positive results. And number three, because we are encouraged in the Lord, we can encourage others to do the same. God is good. He is good only. We praise Him. We honor Him. We thank Him. Be encouraged from these messages, people. This is from the Word of God. This isn't Terry giving you a, a pep talk from her own mind and her own heart. I am giving you the pep talk of pep talks because it's the word of God. It's something to cheer about. It's something to raise your hands and run and get excited no matter what you are going through. When I thought I was going to die and I woke up the next day, that was it. What came to me was the scripture, I shall live and not die. And that's what I have done. And it's been many years ago now. Many of my friends have gone through a lot of different treatments for a lot of different illnesses and sickness. Well, you should see them now. They are on top. They are rising up because they speak the word, because they believe the word. You have to believe God's word. Then when you say it, your peace is upon you. Your strength is upon you. God bless you. It's good to be here with you. And I will see you next week with a brand new topic. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your Spirit could this have been done.